Kia ora tātou, ko Joe Carpenter toko ingoa, kei manaki whenua aho e mahiana. Today I'm going to be giving a video abstract for our paper which we've recently published in Biological Invasions. So shipwrecks are one of the greatest threats facing island biodiversity, but there's still surprisingly a lot that we don't know about them. Here in Aotearoa, we find a general pattern that shipwrecks are much more common and abundant in warm, rich forests like we'd find in the northern North Island that are dominated by delicious podocarps. But in cold, high elevation forests, normally dominated by beech trees, they're much more rare. Because of that, these cold forests can act as safe havens for our native species. But we still don't know why shipwrecks don't become more common in these cold forests, and whether that might change in future. So there's two potential reasons why this could be. The first could be that shipwrecks simply can't withstand the cold in these forests. Our shipwrecks evolved in southern India, which is clearly quite a different climate to what they now find in Fiordland. A second reason could be that these forests just simply don't have enough food to normally um, sustain kind of abundant shipwreck populations. These cold forests normally have beech trees, and beech trees just don't seed every year, so normally they're pretty resource poor. We designed a study in Lake Alabaster in Fiordland to test which of these two hypotheses was most likely to be true. We measured rats through a massive mast event, which is where all the beech trees mast or seed synchronously, and thereby they just flood the landscape with a huge amount of food and create a perfect kind of natural experiment. But we also provided the rats with extra food for six months to see if we could sustain their densities through the winter to see whether they could survive. We radio tracked rats by helicopter and we live tracked rats so that we could understand their density. When we got to Lake Alabaster three months after the beach seed had fallen, we found that rats were already at high densities at low and mid elevation. In fact, rats at mid elevation were at about 16 rats per hectare. That's one of the highest densities ever recorded on the New Zealand mainland. However, at high elevation, the rats were barely detectable. When we came back again three months later, things had changed. Ship rats were now comparatively abundant at high elevation too. We think this initial surge in numbers was mainly driven by immigration from lower elevations, just because of the speed of the increase. All the rat populations peaked in roughly the summer following the mast, before declining rapidly over the following year. So what did our extra feeding do? Well, our fed rats had better survival, they bred more, and they had higher densities than, than the unfed rats. But they still declined pretty much to zero by the spring. So what we think was happening was that probably stoats were getting in there and preying upon them, as we also had a big increase in stoat numbers because of this massive rodent plague that the area was experiencing. So what our study suggests is that it's more likely to be the lack of food in these cold, high elevation forests that normally prevents rats from becoming abundant there. But this is still something that could change over time with climate change. If we experience more warming, then it's likely that we'll end up getting more insects in these forests, and over the longer term, we might also start getting a greater diversity of small fruiting shrubs, and they'll provide a much more consistent amount of food for rats in these environments. So it's really important that we keep an eye on shipwreck distributions and how they might change in the future, so that we can safeguard our native fauna that, create, that use these habitats as refugia.